How many times have you set New Year's resolution and failed to keep them? Well, you're not alone. Research shows that only 9% of the people can successfully keep their New Year's resolution. 23% of the people failed by end of their first week. And 43% of the people gave up by end of their first month. Why does that happen? Resolution is a decision to do or not do something. Lose weight, eat healthy, travel more, drink more water. These are some of the most popular New Year's resolution, but you cannot measure progress against any of these. And that's why resolutions fail. And that's why you need goals. Goal meaning an aim towards desired result. According to Michael Hyatt, the author of this book, there are two types of goals. One is the habit goal and second is achievement goal. So instead of setting a New Year's resolution, like I'll drink more water, you can set habit goals that every morning when I wake up, I'll have two glasses of water. That is an example of a habit goal. I will read 10 books on machine learning by December 31st, or I will travel to Paris by end of the year. These are achievement goals. Now let's take a moment to talk about what type of goals you should be setting. These are nine life domains. If you wanna have a fulfilling and balanced life, you wanna balance most of these domains. And this is really important because you can have a lot of money, but if you don't have good health, you're gonna end up spending all of these money on hospital bills. On the other hand, if you're really healthy, but don't really make any money, in that case, you're gonna still miss out on so many life experiences. That's why it's important to balance these areas to have most fulfilling life possible. You might say that, Pratiksha, I wanted to set two or three New Year's resolution. Now, are you asking me to set nine goals? No. I mean, you can if you want to, but I'm not suggesting that. You can evaluate all of these areas and see which areas you're doing well in and which areas needs more improvement and set goals on the areas which needs more improvement. Okay, you can go to this site here, answer a few questions and find out which areas need more attention. Now that you know what areas you'll be setting goals in and how many, let's talk about how to set the specific goals. Those that when people set a goal in the comfort zone, they're less likely to achieve it because it doesn't ignite your imagination. It doesn't compel your best thinking. It doesn't really get you excited to go the distance and actually persevere through the challenges that you're gonna face. So the goal needs to be not in your comfort zone, but in your discomfort zone. So this would be where you're uncomfortable. You know, you're feeling a little bit of fear, you might fail. Uncertainty, the path is not clear. Or a little bit of doubt. You know, you're not quite sure that you can pull this off. If that's where you're at, that's perfect. That's a discomfort zone right where your goal should be set. But it's not the delusional zone. And so the delusional zone is where it's, you know, a notch or two beyond that, where you're terrified, you're confused, you're confident or, or concerned that you can't do it. You know, you wanna dial it back a little bit from there. You wanna set smarter goals. You wanna be specific and focused. There's a lot of power in focus. You should be able to measure your progress to see how far or close are you from achieving those goals. A stands for actionable. You should be able to take actions against your goals. For example, be more consistent or make more progress on YouTube is not an actionable goal, but make two videos a month is more actionable. Okay. R stands for risk. Your goal should encourage you to take calculated risks and put you outside your comfort zone. T stands for time bound, meaning you need to have a deadline. E stands for exciting. External motivation will work for a while, but eventually it will wear off. For our goals to really be successful, particularly big goals, we gotta be motivated internally. It's not gonna come because our culture expects it, or our wife or our husband expects it, yes. or somebody's putting pressure on us at work. Your goal should be relevant to your life. You need the goals that aligns to the demands and need of your life. The goal of a college student versus a mother or a working professional can look entirely different. You need to have a strong why for your goals. When going gets tough, you're likely to give up if you don't have a strong reason why you want to achieve those goals. People lose their way when they lose sight of their why. One is make sure that when you set your goal, you've really connected to the why, that you've got a why that can power you through the midst of that messy middle. Or I encourage people, you gotta write down your goals. That's the chief difference between a resolution and a goal, is that the goal is written. It meets certain criteria, but just writing your goal down based on the best goal research out there increases the likelihood of you achieving the goal by 42%. Something about writing down your goal it forces you to get clarity about it. And once you get clarity, it accelerates, it accelerates your progress. I'm gonna share this template with you, one for habit goal and one for achievement goal. You can download it from the link in the description below. You can write down what is your goal, when are you gonna start working on it, how frequently will you be doing this habit? Is it gonna be weekly, monthly, or daily? Target is how long you plan to do this habit. Are you gonna do it for next 30 days, next 90 days, or is it for an entire year? You can write down multiple reasons why you wanna achieve those goals the next step that you're going to take to accomplish that goal. You can track your progress against the progress tracker at the bottom. Turn this into a fun game of calendar chain. You want to create the longest chain without missing a day in between. You can also include your friends and turn it into a friendly competition. That brings me to my next point, that life is better with friends and your social circle have a lot of influence on you. Remember that quote that says you are the average of five people you spend most time with.
Research shows that if you're trying to achieve something being a part of a community, your chances of success go significantly higher. An economist, Enrico Moretti, says, being around smart people tends to make us smarter, creative, and ultimately more productive. Hard for high achievers because we like to check the stuff on and then we get refocused on the next thing. But celebrating those is so important to building momentum and being willing to tackle bigger things in the future. According to Brian Tracy, you should eat that frog first thing in the morning, meaning you should do the most difficult task first so the rest of your day will be easier. But Michael Hyatt says completely different in this book. I recommend people start with the easiest task first, then the next easiest task, now you're going to set a sense of momentum, sense of forward progress, and it builds your confidence. And one of the most important things to accomplish in any uh, goal is believing that you can. Let's say you downloaded these templates, write down your goals, and forget about the whole thing until December 31st. In that case, you're most likely going to fail your goals. You need to break down your giant goals into smaller actionable steps and review your progress regularly. You can do a daily review, weekly review, or monthly review. You should also do a quarterly review called RRR. Star stands for rejoice, meaning you look at your progress and celebrate the milestones you have accomplished. The second R is for revise and recommit. Let's say you set a goal to read 12 books this year, but the first quarter has already passed and you have not done any reading. In that case, you can revise your goal. Instead of 12 books, you can bring it down to, let's say, eight books or nine books and recommit on that goal. The third R is for remove or replace. Now, halfway through the year, you realize that this goal you had set for yourself is no longer relevant to your life or your situation. In that case, you can always replace that with another goal that is more relevant. Okay, I also want you to know about the law of diminishing intent, meaning if you have a thought or an idea that you want to do something, and if you don't do it immediately, and the longer you wait, you're less and less likely to take actions on those. If you really want the next year to be the best year you ever had, then open the link in the description below right now and set some goals and go get them. My goal for next year is to upload 12 more quality videos and get up to 10,000 subscribers. If this video helped you at all, would you please subscribe to this channel and help me achieve my goal?